The Prince of Peace wants to give you a gift this Christmas. The peaceful presence of the Prince of Peace, a lot of peace there, and God shalom for our lives. The biblical word for peace is the word shalom and carries a very strong meaning. Shalom means completeness, wholeness, health, peace, welfare, safety, soundness, tranquility, prosperity, perfected, perfectness, fullness, rest, harmony, the absence of agitation or discord. That's a lot. For me, the meaning of shalom that resonates in my heart is peace as fullness or wholeness of the presence of God in my life. A common phrase used over and over again in the Bible, over 81 times, is the phrase, do not be afraid. Isaiah 41, 13 really speaks to me. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Or Jesus' words in John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Our fears are relieved because of God's peaceful presence that gives us comfort. Our text today is Luke's telling of the first Christmas based on Zechariah's song after the birth of his son John. Verse 67 speaks of Zechariah being full of the Holy Spirit causing him to speak out of the fullness of God's presence in his heart about the future. Zechariah speaks of how God wants to give his people knowledge of their salvation, forgive their evils that builds a wall between us and God, and in God's tender mercy, God's presence will come to us and shine on those living in darkness and those in the shadow of death. That phrase, shadow of death, sound, here, does that sound familiar to any of you? Remember David's phrase from Psalm 23, verse 4? Even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God guides us into the path of peace, of wholeness in God's presence. That's very good news for me. I don't know about you. We are guided along the path to God's peaceful presence through the work of Jesus in our lives. Now, Zechariah wasn't always full of God's spirit and assured of God's peaceful presence in his life, which is also good news, because <laughs> God works with us. Earlier in chapter 1, Zechariah encounters the angel Gabriel and is terrified. The angel speaks God's comfort that God isn't there to harm Zechariah by saying, do not be afraid. When the angel announces that Zechariah's wife Elizabeth is going to give birth to a son, Zechariah, even though overwhelmed by the angel's presence, doubts the message. Gabriel, Gabriel's response to Zechariah is very important. He replied, I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to tell you this good news. Karl Barth speaks of how humankind by ourselves cannot throw off our fears, but God, with whom all fear befalls us, must take our fear away. We all need the living God to say to us, Shalom, 
the fullness of God's peaceful presence, do not be afraid. We have many fears in life. I'm going to start my list. Fears of failure, fears of not enough money, fears of not being loved, fear of being taken advantage of people more powerful than us, fear of evil and darkness, fear of getting old, fear of losing our health, fear of losing our jobs, fear of others not liking us, fears of being out of control, fear of being abandoned and alone, and fear of death. Whatever fears hold us captive, the message of Christmas is that Jesus came to give us fullness or wholeness of the presence of God. God's word of shalom by speaking into our hearts, do not be afraid, gives us strength to realize we have a God who gives us his peaceful presence by holding out his hand and leading us through fear. I was kind of convicted this week because I think many times we fear the wrong things. As C.S. Lewis in his famous message, The Weight of Glory, states, if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering natures of the reward promised in the Bible, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday by the sea. We fear losing health, our jobs, and our loved ones without fearing losing out on God's infinite joy and the gift of God's peaceful presence. David, in the Psalms, understood this fear of losing God's presence in his life. When he committed his greatest sin, his adultery with Bathsheba, he cries out to God in confession, his fear, in Psalm 51, verse 11. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Psalm 104, verse 29, speaks of what would happen to any creature if God would turn away his presence from them. It says, Lord, when you hide your face, they are terrified. When you, they die and return to dust when you take away their breath. When you send your spirit, though, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. Our greatest fear should be of losing a sense of God's presence, shalom, his peace in our lives. If the fullness of God's presence, God's shalom, is in our hearts, we hear the words of God to our fears saying, shalom, do not fear. I love this passage in Philippians 4. It really encourages me. It speaks about why we can be joyful it says, Rejoice in the Lord, always. I'll say it again, Paul says. Rejoice. Let, let your gentleness be evident to all. Why? The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, the shalom of God, which can transcend all our own understanding, which can speak to our fears and what we're going through, do not fear, I am with you. Will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And this is the best part. It's so simple, but it's the best part. Where Paul says, and the God of peace will be with you. Isaiah reminds us he will keep us in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in God. We're going to come to the Lord's table now. Here. 
We remember that Jesus came to earth at that first Christmas to break down in our lives any walls that separate us from God and from each other. And to say, do not fear, I am with you. I'm not against you, I'm for you. Through the grace of Jesus, we may eat this meal in God's shalom, His peaceful presence with us and each other. For He Himself is our peace. He has broken the dividing wall of hostility. His purpose was to create in Himself one new humanity, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them, humanity to God through the cross, He put to death their hostility. He came, Jesus came, and preached peace to you who are far away, who thought God doesn't care about me, and peace to those who are very near. For through Jesus, we have access to God's peace, access to the Father by His Spirit. I want to pray now. And uh, I was hoping to walk around and kind of do requests, but I'm limited a little bit with technology this morning. Do you want the hand mic, Al? I'll walk around with I'll you. I'll try to use that. I'll walk around with you if you want. But I just want to share... Is this on there? I just want to share... Um, I found out this week that my father has cancer um, in his bladder and it's in the muscle and he's going to need some chemotherapy and um, eventually have his bladder taken out. Um, and those are the kind of things that we hear in life and makes us kind of, well, what's important? And um, I've been just really struggling, but in taking that Philippians passage, putting my anxiety for my dad before God, and hearing God say to me, Shalom, do not be afraid. And I just want to give you a chance. There might be people that you're thinking of that need God's peace, His Shalom, this time of year. So if you know someone that you could just say their first name, just raise your hand, and I'm not going to be able to probably acknowledge everyone, but I'm going to pray a prayer of God's peace over all our situations. So please pray for my dad. Anyone else? Paul? Yes, thank you. Dr. Angus? You instead. Somebody else? Sharon. Sharon. Jeff. Jeff. Heather. 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 Those who have lost loved ones. Those who have lost loved ones at Christmas. That's a, Christmas can be a very hard time. Audrey. Barb. 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 Forgive me if I can't hear. So. Anyone else? Those who are alone at Christmas. Yep. Help him. June? Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't say it. Anyone else? Yeah. Ruth. Okay. Gary? Oh God, you are the bright morning star. We pray for those among us who grieve the loss of loved ones, the tarnishing of innocence, the failing of health, the flight of security. Peace to them. Give them your peace. 
You do not give as the world gives. Do not let their hearts be troubled, and help them not to be afraid. O God, who is sight to the blind, we pray for those among us whose eyes are clouded, who are blind in soul, mind, or body. Be for them and for us both courage and sight. Peace, we ask that you give them, now as the world gives, and may their hearts not be troubled, and may they not be afraid. O God, whose strength to the besieged, we pray for those among us who are beset by temptation, those who are in danger, those whose enemies are close and whose help seems far away. Peace, we ask that you give them, now as the world gives. May they not have their hearts be troubled, and may they not be afraid. God, who is salvation to the lost, we pray for those among us who have never found your way, or who, having found it, have strayed from your path. Be for them and for us the beacon that guides safely home. Peace, we pray for them. May their, not as the world gives, but do not let their hearts be troubled, and may they not be afraid. O God, who is comfort to the fearful, we pray for those among us who live in fear of real threats of, or imagined, whose lives are torn by war, whose thoughts are confused by mental illness, whose souls and bodies are ravaged by abuse. Peace, we pray for them. Not as the world gives. Do not let their hearts be troubled, and may they not be afraid. Give us wisdom, O God, to turn to you in times of stress, fear, and grief, in times of blindness, temptation, danger, and perdition. Peace, we ask, not as the world gives. Do not let our hearts be troubled, and help us not to be afraid. Amen.